The FNRI Service Laboratory is an ISO IEC 17025 accredited laboratory which is composed of three laboratories. It is the focal agency of the Department of Science and Technology for Nutrition Labeling and is recognized by the Philippine FDA for Nutrition Labeling and by BFAR for Marine Food Products Analysis. It is the only laboratory in the Philippines that is capable to analyze serum vitamin A and urinary iodine excretion. Initially mandated to conduct researches on biological parameters and support the laboratory needs of various in-house food research and development projects, FNRI SL has continuously expanded and has offered its services also to the public. The chemical laboratory is equipped with instruments that allow proximate determination and physical chemical analysis of foods. Also, our laboratory is equipped with state-of-the-art modern instruments such as high-performance liquid chromatography, gas chromatography, atomic absorption spectrophotometer, graphite furnace equipped AAS, Automatic Analyzer WYD Iodine Checker and the UVVIS Spectrophotometer is currently used for developing methods and water quality assessment. In the biochemical laboratory, other modern instrumentation are being used in order to support the National Nutrition Survey, medical research institutions, LGUs, non-government and international organizations. Having continuously participated and showed satisfactory results in the quality assurance programs, of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Biochem Lab offers now wide range of tests. Meanwhile, the Microbiological Lab is a food laboratory offering range of tests covering spoilage, indicator and pathogenic microorganisms in food and water samples. The Microlab offers the following. Also, the Microlab conducts isolation and identification of pathogenic microorganisms in food that are of significance to public health. Recently, the laboratory has also started performing molecular pathogen detection in food and bacterial cultures using the technology of real-time polymerase chain reaction, detection of salmonella and vibrio, has become more rapid and accurate as we are committed to deliver high quality and timely services. The laboratory is maintained by well-trained, experienced, and PRC-registered chemists and chemical technicians, medical technologists, and registered microbiologists on analysis of different samples. Aside from our commitment, to maintain quality data generation, FNRI SL also holds trainings and continuous consultation to customers and stakeholders. In the future, the laboratory aims to expand its services by offering specialized tests to the public. In order to do this, we commit to continuously develop methods and train our laboratory staff for excellence and quality service.
the parents are working while the stress is tough. Just remember the following. Go for a daily dose of nutrition. Go for a balanced meal with variation. Go for a run or two of exercise. Go for it. Aim for healthy lifestyles. Inspire others to do the same. Story of life is no game. Life doesn't need to end that fast. If you choose health, the longer you last. Go for a balanced meal with variation. Go for a round or two of exercise. Aim for, Aim for healthy lifestyles. Go for a daily dose of nutrition. Go for a balanced meal with variation. Go for a round or two of exercise. Aim for, Aim for healthy lifestyles. Live longer, happier, better with that. In 2010, DOSDF and RI revolutionized its take on nutrition by incorporating genomics in its researches, investigating the relationship of anthropometric, biochemical, clinical, dietary, and health components to the genetic makeup of Filipinos. DOSDF and RI is looking into providing a more personalized approach of achieving optimum nutrition to every Filipino. Through nutritional genomics, we attempt to better understand how a single nucleotide, a single letter, can make a big difference in our way of living. And so, to support this endeavor, DOSD FNRI capitalized on establishing its molecular laboratory known as the Nutritional Genomics, or the New Gen Lab. With its thrust of bringing science for the people, the New Gen Lab provides assessment of genes and genetic variants associated with micronutrient deficiencies and diet-related non-communicable diseases. The New Gen Lab is equipped with some of the state-of-the-art equipment molecular biology, such as the automated nucleic acid extraction machine, bioinformatics, real-time and digital PCR systems, automated liquid handling system, micro-volume spectrophotometer system, and gel documentation system. With a complete workflow adhering to the highest standard of competency in laboratory testing, Nugen Lab is setting the mark in providing mole biotechniques with transparency, validity, and reliability. Whether you are an individual or a group of enthusiasts seeking answers in nutritional genomics, the Nugen Lab awaits you. Our proficient personal works in close contact with our customers through customized analysis, provision of technical consultancy in nutritional genomics, and standardization or laboratory competency. To even serve you better, we are partnering with a leader in genomic testing for a higher throughput and faster turnaround time. Welcome to the new generation of nutrition. Welcome to the new Gen Lab.
Let's hide a 7-7. Here we go.
Hello! Good afternoon! Good afternoon mga kasama sa buhay, mga kasambuhay, mga kapamilya, kapatid, kapuso, at uh, wag lang kasabwat. Magandang hapon! Ang inyo pong uh, kasama ngayong araw, ngayong hapon, syempre, ang Nutrition Ambassador ng FNRI, wala pong iba kung hindi ako. <laughs> Jing Castaneda po, Tita Jing, sabi nga nila, kasi tumatanda na raw tayo. So maraming salamat po sa FNRI at uh, tayo po ang naging uh, moderator ngayong uh, hapong ito. At syempre maraming salamat din po sa ating partnership with FNRI. Every other Wednesday, ang FNRI po at ang atin pong bisita sa atin pong uh, programa online, no? ang Pamilya Talk episode on health, ang OK Doc. Ito po ay mapapanood 5.30 ng hapon every Wednesday sa Facebook page, YouTube channel ng FNRI, sa Facebook page, YouTube channel ko po at syempre sa ABS-CBN Scene Zone channel sa Kumu. That's every other Wednesday. So salamat po at sa tulong ninyo mas marami pa po tayong mga kapamilya, kapuso, kapatid at mga kasama sa buhay na nabibigyan ng impormasyon na napakahalaga po pagdating sa ating kalusugan, pagdating sa atin pong nutrisyon. Siyempre, lalo na ngayon, di ba, sa pandemya sa COVID, um, o sa pandemya ng COVID, eh, ang ating pong resistensya, ang pinaka matibay, pinaka matibay na pananggalang o panlaban. Kaya importante po, we eat right, di ba? We live right, and siyempre, we lead healthy lifestyles. At ngayon nga pong hapon, Kanina no natapos na tayo ng buong umaga at ngayong hapon isa na namang hapon hapon na punong-puno ng mga nag-uumapaw na impormasyon na mahalaga po sa atin pong mga pamilya. So ang atin pong session this afternoon ay starting right is the right start. Oh, 'di ba? So, sa talakayan pong ito malalaman po natin how to start right pagdating sa nutrition. So this plenary session will feature a powerhouse to tackle the global o bagong term yan ha global at local perspectives of maternal and child nutrition. At ito po ang magiging panimula ng ating 5-day seminar series na maghahatid ng mga makabagong kaalaman kung bakit ang maternal, newborn and child health ang sinasabing right start towards creating a healthy nation. So napakahalaga po lalong-lalo na, 'di ba? Sinasabi nga yung uh, maternal deaths tumataas. At importante po na magkaroon ng tamang gabay ang mga nanay sa kanilang pagbubuntis at maging sa kanilang uh, panganganak para matiyak yung kalusugan ng ating mga bulilit na sinasabi nyang sila ang kinabukasan ng ating bayan. O pero bagong lahat ha, eto po, kailangan lamang nating i-acknowledge yung atin pong mga bisita. Siyempre, unahin po natin, Honorable DOST Secretary Fortunato de la Peña, Dr. Rowena Cristina Guevara, Under Secretary for Research and Development of the DOST, DOST FNRI's former directors, Dr. Corazon Barba, 
Dr. Rodolfo Florentino, and of course, Dr. Mario Papanzana. They're also joining us today. Uy, miss na kita ha, Dr. Mario. Si DOST Assistant Secretary Teodoro Gatchalian ay kasama rin po natin. DA High Value Props Program Director, uh, Nichols, o Nichols A. Manalo. DOST Department of Legislative Liaison Office, Director Lita Suerte. DOST Internal Audit Service, Director Maria Teresa de Guzman. And Mr. Cesar Pedraza, Director for Planning and Evaluation Service. Ang atin pong mga manonood, uy, ang dami. More than 700 um, participants mula po sa iba't ibang mga field, iba't ibang mga sektor. Kasama na po doon ang public health professionals and practitioners, nutrition workers, various entrepreneurs, members of the academe and research organizations, partners from the food industry, at syempre, ang atin pong mga kapatid sa media. Ayan. So thank you po for tuning in. Thank you po for watching. And I'm sure marami po kayong matututunan. Let's make sure we just have, um, kumbaga, alam nyo naman, itong oras na to, eh, kakakain lang, no? So baka medyo inaantok-antok tayo, kaya kailangan full of energy, di ba? Full of energy ang atin pong talakayan ngayong hapon. But before we start, allow me to share some important reminders. Ayan, ito pinapakita po natin. Unang-una, this plenary session is simulcast live via the DOST FNRI official YouTube channel. Next, if you haven't registered for the seminar series, kindly scan the QR code or go to the link shown on your screens. Third, only registered or registered participants will be given certificates for the 47th DOST FNRI seminar series. Next, please make sure to time in for this technical session by accomplishing the attendance form provided in the chat box. This is needed for your PRC CPD units. Oh, sayang din yun, ha? So again, please make sure to time in. Next, feel free to ask questions. Use the Q&A box below your screens and our panelists will address selected questions during the open forum. Pero ano po ha, in case lamang po hindi natin mabasa lahat, ako pasensya lamang, alam nyo naman, syempre may time constraints, no? Pero may open forum to po tayo mamaya at babasahin ko po ang inyong mga tanong. Ayan, o excited na ba kayo? Halika na, ito na, umpisa na po natin ang ating talakayan proper. So for this session, we are going to have two panelists who will be presenting each of their chosen topics and a set of three reactors who will express their response and views on the topics presented by the panelists. So maaari pong uh, silang magbigay ng karagdagang kaalaman at informasyon sa mga paksang tinalakay ng ating mga panelists. Ito na po ang ating unang panelist. Our first panelist is none other than the Director of the Department of Science and Technology Food and Nutrition Research Institute and conferred as Scientist II by the National Academy of Science and Technology and the Civil Service Commission, Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa. She has a Master of Science degree in Nutrition from the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education for Tropical Medicine Regional Center for Community Nutrition, University of Indonesia, and a PhD in community nutrition. Uy, graduating cum laude. Hashtag Lodi, ha? Lodi talaga natin, si Dok Agdepa, from the same university. She has also been a short-term consultant in Indonesia and in the National Institute of Nutrition, Hanoi, Vietnam, and a project leader in the conduct of national nutrition surveys. She conducted numerous community trials that contributed significantly to the improvement in nutritional status of Filipinos. Among the greatest accomplishments are the researches translated into laws and policies. Her most recent research is the use of virgin coconut oil 
among probable and suspect cases of COVID-19. She received a number of awards, Pag-asa, which was awarded by the President of the Philippines, the Alberto Romualdez Outstanding Health Research Award, national category, the Clara Ruth Darby Award, 10 Outstanding Leaders in Nutrition, and a Citation Award by the Profession or Professional Regulation Commission. Next, our next panelist is the Deputy Director of the Department of Science and Technology, Food and Nutrition Research Institute, Dr. Anthony P. Calibo. He graduated from the University of the Philippines, Manila, with a Bachelor of Science degree in Public Health and took up his medical degree at the St. Luke's College of Medicine, William Kwasha Memorial, where he was also a pediatric resident in training. He became a medical specialist for, and eventually the OIC division chief at the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau and under the Department of Health. He was also a resource person of the Interagency Committee on EO51 of the Infant and Young Child Feeding, a health program issued jointly by the World Health Organization and the Department of Health. With so much contributions in different researches and in his field of work, Dr. Kalibo was recognized by several institutions. These include Outstanding Physician and Alumnus Award by the Philippine Pasay Chuanghua Academy. The Research and Biotechnology Division Young In Investigator Award and first prize winner by the St. Luke's Medical Center, Quezon City. Recipient of the Young Physician Leaders Training Program by the Interagency Medical Panel, Berlin, and a seventh round finalist and co-presenter, Innovation to Scale, National Scale Up of Comprehensive Program of, um, of the Comprehensive Program for Improving Care of premature and small newborns in the Philippines by the Saving Lives at Birth Development Exchange Grand Challenge for Development. Not only is he very knowledgeable in his field of expertise, or oh, hindi lang pang health ha, pero pang musika din, because he's also skilled in playing different instruments such as the marimba, vibraphone, and xylophone. Dapat may intermission mamaya at si Dr. Kalibo ang ating uh, patugtugin. Ayan na. Without further ado, let us all give the virtual floor to Dr. Agdepa and Dr. Kalibo. Hey, good afternoon to everyone and to all the panelists. A pleasant afternoon to you. Dr. Kalibo, good afternoon. So my presentation is uh, on food and nutrient intakes of breastfeeding ma Filipino mothers. Allow me to present this topic. Present, uh, starting with the brief background of the study, the research design and methodology, I will move on with the results, the conclusions, and the recommendations. So uh, the nutritional needs of breastfeeding mothers are increased so to support the high nutritional needs of both the mother and the child. The increased needs are needed to support nutrients for breast milk production and maintain the daily requirement needed for the mother. And uh, the energy requirement increases by about 500 kilocalories per day. So inadequacy of the maternal dietary intake may result in the mobilization of nutrient stores resulting in loss of essential nutrients. An example of this is that um, if a breastfeeding mother lacks this nutrient, lacks uh, energy, then uh, the depletion will be actually very fast in such a way that the mother and the child will become actually undernourished. So the results from the 2019 National Nutrition Survey reported that there are only 10.4% chronic energy deficient lactating mothers, while there is a, about 31.1% prevalence of overweight or obese lactating mothers. Although the figure for chronic energy deficiency mothers 
have been slightly decreased from 11% to 10.4%, there was a significant increase of overweight and obesity among lactating women from 28.5% 20, prevalence in 2018 to 31.1% in 2019. This underscores the nutritional risks of breastfeeding mothers having the double burden of malnutrition. Now, since poor maternal nutrition puts infants at higher risks of infections and potentially undernutrition, a thorough investigation of the breastfeeding mother's nutritional intakes is important. This will also bring focus to effective postnatal care of mothers. Now, this is a cross-sectional study observing sional in design and non-interventional conducted in collaboration with one of the private medical centers in Metro Manila. With cooperation from the sites, physicians, and nurses, mothers' information such as aid, age, age, educational level, and occupation, and all other general profile were also were actually co uh, collected. So the total sample size of breastfeeding mothers in this study was 70. So for the dietary analysis, this was collected using a three-day non-consecutive food diary. As food diaries are recorded during the time of consumption by the subjects, instructions were thoroughly explained by the registered nutritionist dietitians on how to measure and record food intake. These were collected for four weeks with three days of non-consecutive intakes recorded per week. After inputting of recalls by subjects, these were validated face-to-face -face by the registered nutritionist dietitians to check for inconsistencies and maintain the accuracy of the data. So uh, for the statistical analysis, usual mean food intakes were calculated using the PC software for intake distribution estimation program uh, in the estimation of inadequate intakes. So if I say uh, estimated energy requirement, this actually expresses the average dietary energy intake that is predicted to maintain energy balance in healthy, normal weight individuals of a defined age, gender, weight, height, and level of physical activity consistent with good health. Before we discuss the results of the study, that these are the things that you should remember because I will be using these terminologies in my succeeding slides. So like, for example, also the acceptable macronutrient distribution ranges, this explains the range of intakes for a particular energy source, like for example, carbohydrate, protein, or fat, that is associated with reduced risk of chronic diseases while providing adequate intakes of essential nutrients as expressed in percentages of total energy intake. So for the adequate intakes, it is defined as the observed or the experimentally derived intake by a defined population group that appears to sustain health. On the other hand, estimated average requirement is the average or mean daily nutrient intake that meets the requirement of half the healthy individuals in a particular age and sex-specific group. For the recommended nutrient intake, this term is a set of the 2SD, or standard deviation, of the requirement above the EAR, and will meet the needs of the 97% to 98% of the population. The tolerable upper limit level is defined as the highest level of daily in nutrient uh, intake likely to pose no risk of adverse health effects for nearly all individuals in the general population. So let me now move on with the results of the nutrient intake analysis. So our, the mean age of our lactating may, uh, women uh, is actually 26.9 uh, years old with uh, a percentage of chronic energy deficiency from uh, is about 8.57%. Um, 
overweight was 34.4 and obese at 12.9 percent. About 1.4 were clerk and the uh, housewife was about 58.6 uh, percent and those working as sales or service about 40 percent. For the educational level, elementary graduate was 2.9, high school 60 percent, college 11.4, and other uh, vocational or associated educational uh, or education is about 17.1% and about 8.6% respectively. So the mean energy intake based on the results of the analysis, the mean energy intake of 2,516.7 kilocalories per day was about 28.6% higher than the computed EAR of about 1,957 kilocalories per day. So about 13% of uh, our breastfeeding mothers had exceeded the ER, which might increase the possibility of being overweight or obese when the excess intake is prolonged for a long period with insufficient insu um, with physical activity. So in terms of protein intake, 37% of breastfeeding mothers had inadequate protein, which is a, an important nutrient during lactation. Several studies have shown that a low-protein diet reduces prolactin secretion, which can affect milk production. And uh, in terms of fat intake, a 3% prevalence of inadequate intakes and 4% exceeding the AAR over the AMDR among the breastfeeding women. While in terms of carbohydrates intake, 2% of breastfeeding mothers had intakes below the AAR over the AMDR and only 1% exceeded the recommendation. So an alarming percentage of breastfeeding women in the study had inadequate intakes of micronutrients. Most notable are the folate, iron, and B12, which have about 96%, 99%, and 46% inadequacy. These nutrients are essential for breastfeeding mothers to be sufficient since maternal intake is relative to breast milk concentration. Since nutrient concentration is shared with breast milk concentration, no nutrient stores may be depleted, resulting to insufficiency even for just mater for the maternal utilization. So, um, rice, uh, with regards to the food group intake, rice, about 94.3%, fats and oil, 74.3%, Sweetened beverages, about 68.6%, bread, 65%, and fish and shellfish, 45.7%, were the top five most consumed foods of breastfeeding mothers, as seen in this figure. Dark green leafy vegetables were the least consumed uh, food group of breastfeeding mothers. And about rice, bread, pork, powdered milk, and sweet bakery products were, cons were considered as the top five sources of energy, as seen in this figure. And rice is the major source of carbohydrates and proteins. And we know very well that rice as a source of protein is really very low, meaning to say low uh, biological value. And um, about uh, the pork... Pork was actually the top source of total fat. And the top uh, food sources of folate for breastfeeding mothers comes from grains or uh, white rice, while uh, meat and proteins is the main source are the um, are the main sources of vitamin B12 among breastfeeding mothers. It can also be noted that top food sources for vitamin C comes mainly from sweetened beverages, that's about 35.5%, and vegetables, about 24.2%. On the other hand, however, top food sources of riboflavin and vitamin A are from powdered milk. So top food sources of calcium from breastfeeding mothers come mainly, comes mainly from powdered milk, while food sources of iron comes mainly from grains or rice. 
So we know very well that iron coming from rice is also having very low bioavailability. And for source, food sources of zinc comes from rice also. So um, take away messages on mother's intakes based on the results of this food analysis survey. So consumption of energy dense nutrient food, uh, nutrient food source of foods containing fats, oils, and sugars, the consumption of nutrient dense foods is very, very low. So this may be um, this may increase the risk of breastfeeding mothers who develop metabolic lifestyle diseases, also given the increasing incidence of overweight and obesity among lactating mothers. This must be thoroughly monitored. So there is really a marked uh, an adequacy of intake in various micronutrients that's actually because of the consumption of low nutrient dense food. So energy dense foods are top five most consumed food by breastfeeding mothers like rice, fats and oils, sweetened beverages, and bread and fish. So the conclusion is that results have shown that there is a high prevalence of inadequate micronutrient intake such as iron, folate, and vitamin B6, as well as B12, considerable uh, with uh, about a considerable high prevalence of inadequate protein intake. This can be explained by the consumption of poor variety of nutrient-poor foods. So the recommendation, these recommendations are based on the results of the food and nutrient analysis of this study. Add high quality protein to diet, Animal sources such as meat, fish, and eggs have higher absorption and utilization by the body. Increased intake of fruits and vegetables, green leafy vegetables are good sources of folate and dietary fiber. And of course, limit the intake of sugar, sweet, and beverages. High sugar intake is associated with metabolic syndrome. Vitamin C is better absorbed from fruits and vegetable sources. So uh, the recommendation, the consumption of sugar, sweetened beverages, low consumption of fruits and vegetables, along with inadequate consumption of protein and iron-rich foods, must be addressed with a strong advocacy for behavior change. Improving the dietary intake during breastfeeding will be both beneficial to the mother and the child. Uh, I'd like to end this presentation by uh, quoting this, uh, breast milk is love turned into food, it takes someone special to share that love. With this, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating lahat. Thank you, Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa, ang atin pong DOST FNRI Director. Thank you, Tita Mel. Before anything else, we'd like to acknowledge our other guests, Assistant Secretary Diana Ignacio. Assistant Secretary for Human Resources Management, Management Services, and Special Concerns. And the OST NCR Regional Director, Jose Patalinhug. Ayan, ang atin pong mga humahabol na bisita ngayong hapon. O habang hinihintay natin yung namang presentation ni Dr. Anthony Calibo, ay uh, babanggitin ko lang ha, nagnonotes ako, medyo nakakaalarma yung mga binigay na figures, no? Uh, ni Tita Mel. At marami talagang kailangang uh, ika nga eh, impormasyon na maibahagi sa ating mga nanay pagdating po sa pagtitiyak na malusog ang mga uh, sanggol no, sa kanilang mga sinapupunan. Although ngayon dahil sa pandemya, baka hindi lamang yung information dissemination ang problema no? kung hindi yung access din sa well, pagkain, na masustansya at syempre yung uh, kapasidad no, na bumili ng mga, uh, mga masusustansyang pagkain. Although may mga paraan naman, di ba? may mga LGUs, usong-usong ngay ngayon yung mga plantito at plantita. So pwede po tayo magtanim sa ating mga backyard, ng, sa ating mga bakuran, ng mga gulay, etc. So I'm sure mamaya matatalakay din natin yan, di ba? Lalo-lalo na yung malunggay, di ba? Simpleng-simpleng uh, malunggay pero napaka-laki ng sustansya, nutrisyon na pwede pong ibigay sa mga uh, nagbubuntis. Ayan. Okay, so from here on, let's now go to the presentation of our Deputy Director, 
of the Department of Science and Technology Food and Nutrition Research Institute, Dr. Anthony Calibo. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Good afternoon to our speakers, Dr. Agdepa, and also to our moderator and panel of uh, discussions. Uh, I'd like to greet uh, the FNRI on its uh, 74th anniversary and likewise uh, extend my gratitude to the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to present uh, this uh, Food and Nutrition Research Institute seminar series, uh, Good Nutrition in the First 1,000 Days, Starting Right is the Right Start. My topic for today is The Lancet, Maternal and Child Undernutrition Progress, What Can We Learn, Opportunities for Research and Development, and the Sustainable Development Goals. I declare no conflict of interest uh, with regards to this presentation. And this is the outline of my presentation. I'll tackle the following topics, malnutrition and the COVID-19 pandemic, goals and targets like the MDGs, World Health Assembly targets, the SDGs, the UN Decade of Action for Nutrition, the ICN2, and of course, progress towards the SDG and global trends. The key messages and the new conceptual framework of the Lancet Child and Undernutrition Series, opportunities for R&D, especially on direct healthcare sector nutrition interventions, challenges, and new thought. The World Bank has issued its undernutrition report of the Philippines, scale, scope, and opportunities for nutrition policy and programming. It tells the Philippines that it has to pay attention to the silent pandemic of childhood stunting, and that this silent pandemic stalks Filipino children. However, in the context of COVID and malnutrition, there seems to be a syndemic phenomenon happening, which means that apart from the COVID-19 pandemic, malnutrition is a condition that coexists in the occurrence of COVID-19. Globally, as of today, there are 178 million cases and 3 million deaths. And in the Philippines, there's around 1,400,000 cases and 24,000 deaths already. However, compared to under five children dying from other causes of illnesses, among them malnutrition, these numbers pale in comparison to 5,600,000 deaths of under five children, of which 150 million are stunted according to the 2020 Joint Childhood Malnutrition Estimates done by the United Nations, UNICEF, World Health Organization, and World Bank. Unfortunately, there are no available global data for children aged 5 to 9 years old and 10 to 19 years old, and this remains to be a data gap. In the year 2000, almost two decades ago, the United Nations General Assembly declared the United Nations Millennium Declaration or what has been known as the MDGs. And after um, 15 years of uh, meeting the MDG deadline, the unfinished agenda was continued in the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. We know that MDG 4 tackled on reducing childhood mortality. And likewise, this has continued in the Sustainable Development Goals number two. What does the MDG? provide us to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, of which underweight, stunting, and wasting in children are to be addressed. This unfinished agenda was continued in the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. It now targets to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Likewise, these are the indicators that are met to be achieved by the end of 2030. Exclusive breastfeeding, low birth weight, underweight, stunting, and wasting. As such, the World Health Assembly has also identified global targets, which was originally intended to be achieved in the year 2025. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it seems that these targets would be affected to be achieved and hence, there's also an ongoing discussion that this has to be extended as well to meet the global targets 
coinciding with the SDGs. The United Nations General Assembly has also declared in 2016 that this will become now the United Nations Decade of Action of Action on Nutrition. And in 2014, the second International Conference on Nutrition was held in Rome, gathering experts, global movers, including representations from member states who address malnutrition. All of, the, all of these things all together provide global directions and at the same time the development agenda to address malnutrition across the life stages. Current numbers in progress in childhood malnutrition. As I mentioned, stunting has 149 million children affected and there are only uh, countries, 25% of which are meeting the SDG targets. In Asia, as seen in the bar graph, there's around 45% of countries meeting the SDG targets for stunting reduction. For wasting, we now have 45 million children affected. Uh, and in Asia, uh, there are around 20 to 30% achieving these targets, but only 28% of countries are meeting this. Likewise, the target for overweight uh, reduction uh, has 17% of countries meeting this. And the countries in Asia are around 25% meeting these SDG targets. These estimates are found in levels and trend in child malnutrition, as I have mentioned earlier. Apart from the numbers of um, under five childhood malnutrition, a measure called Disability Adjusted Life Years or DALIS are also available, uh, part of the Global Burden of Disease group that looks into disabilities incurred or brought about by these malnutrition problems. Anemia as an impairment affects 50,300,000 disability adjusted life years. And likewise, uh, micronutrient deficiencies such as iodine, iron, vitamin A, and zinc deficiency also affects a good number. But overall, child and maternal malnutrition has 295 million disability adjusted life years. It means that these are the number of children and even women affected uh, by these conditions throughout the, their lives. Now we proceed with the Lancet series on maternal and child undernutrition uh, that was uh, published in the year 2008 and 2013. This is the meat of our topic for this session. What is the importance of these publications? These series have actually provided directions to the UN agencies and at the same time shaping global policies and national policies as well to address childhood malnutrition, including that of their mothers. Out of these uh, findings uh, brought about by the experts in 2010, uh, the first 1,000 days campaign was launched. And in the Philippines, it has actually gained forward uh, in the past six years. In 2018, uh, there's a law that was already signed, the Republic Act 11148, otherwise known as the Kalusuka Nutrition ng Magnana Act, or Health Nutrition of Mother and Child. And fast forward, the Lancet series has updated evidences, recommendations, found in its Maternal and Child Under Nutrition Progress 2021. The series papers contain revisiting maternal and child under nutrition in low-income and middle-income countries with variable progress towards an unfinished agenda, and that reflects the SDGs. Maternal and Child Under Nutrition Progress, series 2, addresses mobilizing evidence, data, and resources to achieve global maternal and child under nutrition targets and the sustainable development goals an agenda for action. What are the key messages provided by these papers? Stunting and wasting persist as important public health problems in low-income countries, and progress was slow for wasting and low birth weight. New evidence tells us that incidence of stunting and wasting are highest during the first six months of life, and there's a need to reinforce the focus on the first 1,000 days from conception up to age two years. 
There are positive yet small reductions in the prevalence of low body mass index among women of reproductive age, and a new evidence reinforces the link between nutrition of mothers and reproductive outcomes, hence the approach of life stages. Investments to reduce undernutrition in women are also very important, and this is to improve women's own health and address the healthy nutrition of their children. In the paper two, we found out that several direct nutrition interventions are ready for scaling up in health systems. Interventions and actions are required to increase coverage and improve quality of service delivery. And these will require renewed commitment in country levels and even in part among development partners, new insights from implementation research, and there's a need to fast track funding. Also, Evidence from in-depth analysis on stunting reduction reaffirms the need for a range of sectoral actions, and this will require multi-sectoral, multi-pronged directions to address underlying determinants of undernutrition, and we need to foster enabling environments. Cost and cost effectiveness, on the other hand, of these interventions delivered across sectors has not kept pace and remains a barrier to effective planning by governments. And this is an area of R&D that needs to be explored further. Data on the domestic spending for nutrition show a decline for many countries during the same period. We have to act now. There's no time to lose. And nutrition actors at global and national levels must respond to the call to action to address large remaining burden of undernutrition worldwide. We need to bring together resources, be it across civil society, be it across governments, and likewise among donors, development partners, and funding agencies. Leadership and coordination has to be done in multiple fronts, and we need to maximize data and evidence. Evidence based for direct and indirect interventions reduce undernutrition has grown substantially since the 2013 lands a series on maternal and child undernutrition. And right now, there's a need of greater specificity that action should be prioritized, not just in the health sector, but likewise on agriculture and food systems, education, water, sanitation, and hygiene, social protection, and other sectors. A paper by Dr. Buta and uh, Emily Kens on effective interventions to address maternal and child malnutrition provided updating of evidences. These are nutritional interventions delivered within and outside the healthcare sector that are equally crucial for preventing and managing malnutrition. The drivers of undernutrition are diverse, and there are novel evidence synthesis methods that underscore the need for multi-sectoral action and coordination. The gaps are there and they remain for strategies to address malnutrition among school children and adolescents. However, new evidence now supports the use of lighted based nutrient supplementation in small quantity or LMSSQ for re reducing childhood stunting, wasting, and underweight. Also, the use of antenatal multiple micronutrient supplementation for, to prevent adverse pregnancy and birth outcomes. In 2013, there was what we call as the Lancet 10 or the 10 recommendations that address optimal maternal nutrition during pregnancy, infant and young child feeding, micronutrient supplementation in children at risk, and management of acute malnutrition. In 2021, in this series, these are now called the 11 Summarize. For optimal maternal nutrition, maternal multiple micronutrients or IFA supplementation, including periconceptual folic acid supplementation, maternal calcium supplementation, a balanced energy protein supplementation, and likewise universal salt ionization. Promotion of breastfeeding is still very important among its 11 samurai recommendations. Complementary feeding education and food provision for food insecure population groups, and likewise, complementary feeding education for food secure populations. Micronutrient supplementation has actually uh, in, uh, further has a recommendation, which now has therapeutic zinc supplementation apart from preventive, and 
the maintenance of vitamin A supplementation right now in deficient context. For the management of acute malnutrition, RUSM has been found effective for management of acute malnutrition and preventing SQ, uh, LNS, for optimizing health and growth in children. The framework in 2013, as we found out, has been changed from nutrition-specific and nutrition-sensitive interventions. We now have the revised framework for classification and nutrition actions. This now looks into direct health sector nutrition interventions, other sectoral strategies directly affecting nutrition on the left side, and indirect health sector nutrition interventions, and likewise other sectoral strategies. All in all, we need cross-cutting strategies to address malnutrition, and this will require health system strengthening, data system strengthening, community evaluate mobilization, and evaluation for impact. What are the opportunities for R&D in the first 1,000 days for the SDGs? Implementation research, particularly for kangaroo mother care for low birth weight newborn versus uh, standard of care and vitamin A supplementation. Focus on the R&D opportunities. Uh, these are my personal take on these R&D opportunities. We can explore community-based KMC research for growth and development and outcomes at six months, particularly those who are already in the community after hospital discharge. The trend analysis of vitamin A supplementation, knowing that the country has been doing this for so many years already, vis-a-vis -vis serum retinol levels and vitamin A deficiency disorders. Using the use of multiple micronutrient supplements, which has not entered the country and are, are still using iron and folic acid supplementation. What are policy <laughs> 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 Uh, the use of zinc as part of diarrhea management remains to be a policy challenge. Breastfeeding counseling versus standard of care. Assessment of settings for breastfeeding counseling takes place and the assessment of the quality of breastfeeding counseling. And likewise, what are the gaps on complementary feeding education? Determinants of success of complementary feeding in food insecure populations. Outcome research, particularly on the practice of delayed cord clamping, part of the Unang Yaka, essential newborn care protocol of the government, uh, maternal iron stores of their mothers, and anemia assessment at six months at one year old. Outcomes research will probably strengthen further that really this intervention does, should not uh, be neglected and likewise be emphasized as part of every childbirth practice. LNSSQ, uh, there were LGUs who received this prior to the pandemic and during the pandemic uh, in the years of 2019 and 2020. And similarly, the ready to use supplementary food uh, has been distributed across the country during the pandemic response. This were aimed to address moderate acute malnutrition and likewise, even those who received this in the absence of RDP. Other opportunities for R&D will look into the role of breast milk on an infant's microbiome and epigenome. The institute has its nutrigenomics laboratory and likewise may possibly explore this in collaboration with uh, research institutes conducting molecular biology researches. Data availability on the concurrence of stunting and wasting and concurrence of stunting and overweight obesity in children and women, and even in adolescents. This has to be now be an area of good uh, research that will identify policy gaps and interventions. What are the roles of the delivery platforms to effectively deliver direct and indirect nutrition interventions, and likewise socioeconomic drivers of undernutrition within country inequalities? There's, such, there's also what we call as commercial determinants, particularly on uh, affecting childhood undernutrition with the influence of the growing marketing and sales of uh, milk formula products and likewise unhealthy industrial food. These are known to be 
displacing healthy food as found out in the Lancet series. Additional agenda for RFD will be advancing the data and accountability agenda. The data value chain is a useful framework for assessing global and country nutrition data landscapes, and we need to improve data use culture. This will require agencies um, that are member of the Philippine Statistical Authority Board, and likewise use of this data in the academic and research settings. The financial agenda for nutrition will now be anchored on uh, the 2017 investment framework for nutrition. There's still missing critical information about specific actions across different sectors that can take to improve in nutrition. There's not enough information on cost and cost effectiveness of actions to address the underlying and social determinants of malnutrition. There's a need to know how to propose action will affect sector-specific outcomes, including agricultural and labor productivity, poverty reduction, or educational attainment. What is the implication of this? What will every Juan, Juana, and their Juanito and Juanita benefit from these recommendations? We need to ensure that no modern child diet will be left behind. And of course, every family would be receiving the right intervention across the life stages. Calibrated policies, programs, plans, and investments using a whole of society approach and making science work for the people. Let me now summarize my presentation. Focus and actions in the first 1,000 days define the remaining years in achieving the SDGs. We need global commitments to provide recommendations to policymakers and program implementers. Evidence-based recommendations are already available for a scaled-up implementation of these strategies and interventions. Opportunities for research and development for direct and indirect sector interventions with cross mapping strategies have been provided in this presentation. Actions are needed on data and accountability and the financing agenda. In the celebration of Nutrition Month, with the theme, Malnutrition, Patuloy na Labanan, First 1,000 Days of Tukan. I hope this presentation was able to provide you some insights and perspectives how we can advance the nutrition agenda, helping each and every one of our country. Maraming salamat at sanay nagustuhan po ninyo ang aking presentation. Maraming salamat, mabuhay po ang FNNI, mabuhay po tayong lahat. Yan, thank you, thank you. Marami pong salamat kay Dr. Anthony Kalibo. O, oh, pero bagong lahat, tatawagin natin yung ating mga reactors. But before anything else, ayan, announcements lamang po. Um, para po sa mga nagtatanong ng uh, kopya no, ng mga presentation, um, the FNRI group is just asking for permission from uh, our panelists. Uh, and as soon as they get the, per the permissions, they will be sending you or they will be posting the materials on the FNRI website. Naku, marami raw nagko-complain na medyo hindi malinaw yung audio. So pasensya na lang po, no? Kasi daw, ito po ay dahil sa ulan. O, umuulan dito sa amin. Hindi ko alam sa inyo kung umuulan, no? Dito sa area namin umuulan. So, um, baka raw uh, nakaka-apekto daw po yun sa video and audio output. Ayan. So, um, abangan po natin yung iba pang announcements from our FNRI family. But before anything else, oh, yung galing! We have close to 900 participants na nanonood po sa atin ngayon. At uh, maraming salamat sa informasyon na binahagi po sa atin ni Dr. Kalibo. So it was a very comprehensive report and uh, ang daming mga opportunities no, for research and uh, development. Pero yung importante po yung research Kasi yan ang batayan ng anumang uh, plan of action, no? data, information. And um, in fact, i-share ko lang po, no? my husband is um, uh, helping um, the LG of Quezon City no? with uh, SDG targets, food security, etc. And um, one of the things he says which can still be improved is uh, the data collection. So pagdating sa baselines, for instance, ng nutrition, uh, at iba pa pong mga 
uh, issue no sa LGU di lamang in Quezon City but in in other LGUs as well. Syempre kailangan ano no yung marami po tayong datos na pagbabatayan ng plan of action. May problema yung data collection and uh, the research involved no. Uh, minsan yun po yung napapabayaan. Kulang sa budget, 'di ba? Or sa dami okay. ng mga ginagawa na una yung execution no. Kahit na wala pa ma masyadong datos. So thank you Uh, Dr. Calibo for pointing out that we really need information, we really need to um, go into several researches no, to put together the figures that we need in the area of nutrition. Of course, budget kailangan din dun. No? Pero sabi nga ni Doc Calibo, di ba, no time to lose. And I agree. Talagang dapat po itong aksyonan na. Okay, so before anything else, eto na, papakilala na po natin ang ating mga reactors. Ayan, bibigyan po natin ng pagkakataon ang ating mga distinguished reactors to express their views sa mga paksang narinig po natin mula po sa ating mga panelists. So before we call on our reactors, I'd like to introduce them. First of all, um, our first reactor is an experienced public health leader. For the past 29 years, she has been a facilitator and a trainer for various health programs, particularly on maternal child health and nutrition. She has also served the people of Davao City in different offices, including Nutrition Action Officer, Technical Services Division Chief, Medical Officer 6, Provincial Health Officer 2, and Provincial Nutrition Action Officer from 1991 to 2016. So during her stint in the local government, she led the City Nutrition Committee in the planning, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of health and nutrition programs. She initiated the Fresh Milk Supplemental Feeding Program. And this led to the reduction of protein energy malnutrition among zero to six year old children. She also successfully lobbied for the regularization of 32 nutritionist dietitians deployed in the 16 districts of Davao City in 1996. In 2016, she was elected as the national president of the Nutrition Action Officers of the Philippines Association Incorporated. In August 2019, Dr. Dayang Hirang was appointed as the Executive Director of the National Nutrition Council. Currently, she is designated as a Scaling Up Nutrition Philippines Government Focal Point and most recently appointed as a member of the Executive Committee of the Global Sun Movement, representing Asia and Papua New Guinea. Recently, she was appointed by President Duterte as a Career Executive Service Officer Rank 3. Ladies and gentlemen, our first reactor, Dr. Azucena Dayanghirang, Executive Director of the National Nutrition Council. Next, another esteemed reactor is also a pediatrician with an advanced training in pediatrics and neonatal perinatal medicine at the Children's Hospital of Michigan and Hudson Hospital of the Detroit Medical Center and Wayne State University, Michigan. In 1997, she served as an associate professor and neonatologist at the University of the Philippines College of Medicine and its affiliate Philippine General Hospital, where she committed herself to pushing breastfeeding into the core of pediatric education. She is the founder and the president of the nonprofit Kalusugan ng Magina Incorporated, or Health of Mother and Child, dedicated in promoting and protecting the health of the mother and child diet. Recently, she was awarded as the most outstanding physician of the Philippine Pediatric Society by the Philippine Medical Association. She is currently a member of the Independent Review Group for Early Essential Newborn Care of the WHO Western Pacific Region Office. She has been a consultant of Alliance for Improving Health Outcomes for maternal, newborn, and child health and nutrition projects. She has also been the proponent for Unang Yakap, now globally known as the first embrace, 
and a member of the Health Professionals Alliance Against COVID-19 Steering Committee on Unified Algorithms Providing Simplified Evidence-Based Tool for Diagnosis and Management of COVID-19 Cases in the Philippines. Again, our second reactor, Dr. Maria Asuncion Silvestre. And last but not the least, another important guest reactor is a graduate of Doctor of Medicine at the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center. And she took her residency at the Makati Medical Center. She obtained her master's degree in clinical nutrition support at the Philippine Women's University. She acquired her fellowship in clinical nutrition at St. Luke's Medical Center and took her rotation observation in pediatric clinical nutrition at John Hopkins Hospital, Mount Washington Children's Hospital, and St. Luke's Medical Center, Quezon City. She's a fellow and board certified pediatrician of the Philippine Pediatric Society. She was also a former head of the pediatric clinical support at MMC. Currently, she is an active pediatric consultant and pediatric clinical nutrition specialist at MMC and Asian Hospital and Medical Center. She is a research committee member and the chief of clinics of pediatrics department at the AHMC. To complete our panel of this, the reactors, Dr. Mercedita Magdaleno Makalintal. Ayan, kompleto na ang barkada. So unahin po natin ang ating unang reactor, Dr. Dayang Hiram, again, our Executive Director of the National Nutrition Council. Hi, Doc. Hi, Jing. Maraming salamat, Jing. Good afternoon and happy Nutrition Month, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank BOST FNRI for this great opportunity to share my insights during this 47th FNRI seminar series. And big congratulations also to Dr. Agdepa for a very comprehensive presentation of the study, Food and Nutrient Intakes of Breastfeeding Filipino Mothers. And of course, to Dr. Calibo for the Lancet 2021 Maternal and Child Undernutrition Progress. What can we learn? Opportunities for R&D for the SDGs. I will first be providing a brief reaction to Dr. Agdepa's presentation. So let me share with you some of the efforts of the National Nutrition Council to help lactating mothers achieve proper nutrition as well as some recommendations. Results of this study show that 99% of the sample size have inadequate iron intakes, and this is consistent with the results of the 2019 expanded National Nutrition Survey at 99.9%, which is a trigger that we also need to focus on lactating mothers. The study also showed that rice or grain food group is the top food source for iron and followed by meat and proteins. Also consistent with that of the 2019 ENNS, which revealed that the top food source is rice, followed unfortunately by hot dogs. These results are rather alarming, considering that the prevalence of anemia at 11.6 is still a mild public health problem among the population group based on the 2019 ENNS. Well, in this regard, we need to strengthen nutrition interventions for lactating mothers, such as provision of iron supplements to prevent iron deficiency anemia and to ensure their compliance. As we know, and as stated in the 2013 Philippine Dietary Reference Intake, iron requirements cannot be met by usual diet alone. So we also need to emphasize the consumption of iron-rich foods especially animal-based sources such as meats and eggs, which contain heme iron that is better absorbed by the body. In addition, food fortification also needs to be strengthened to promote and make iron-fortified foods such as iron-fortified rice more available and affordable to the public. Well, the National Nutrition Council recognizes the importance of food fortification and in fact, 
the technical working group on food fortification met last 15, uh, 17 of June 2021. And agreements include coordination of the National Nutrition Council with concerned agencies on monitoring of iron fortified rice. Another alarming result is that 35.5% of the breastfeeding mothers get vitamin C from sweets or sweetened beverages, which are high in energy yet low in nutrients. Instead of getting them from plant-based sources or our glow foods, now, to address this concern, we need to increase our advocacy efforts on the consumption of nutrient-dense foods food through nutrient, nutrition education. Well, the NNC has been conducting campaigns on healthy diets and has been using existing IEC materials such as the Ten Puma Immense, as well as the Pingang Pinoy to promote healthy diets. Now, we need to reiterate to mothers the key messages of these campaigns such as Half the plate per meal should contain or consist of vegetables and fruits as recommended by the Pingang Pinoy, as well as kumain ment number three, which is kumain ng gulay at prutas araw-araw. And also kumain ment number eight, well, hinay-hinay sa pagkain ng alat, mamantika at matatamis. Okay? So, we also have the first 1,000 days Facebook PH Facebook page where tips on healthy diet for lactating mothers can be found. Mothers may also send a message for any inquiries on proper diet or any related concerns on the first 1,000 days of life. Results of the study also show that the mean energy intake of 2,516.7 kilocalories per day, which is actually 28.6% higher than the computed estimated energy requirements of 1,937 kilocalories per day. Well, further, 34.4% of the sample are overweight, while 12.9% are obese. So, thus, together with healthy diet, physical activity is also recommended as these two go hand in hand in achieving a healthy weight. And uh, one good way of securing nutritious foods and engaging in physical activity is through home or community food gardens, which is prior promoted in our ECCD First 1000 Days program. Now, one thing that I would like to see soon is the institutionalization of nutrition and diet counseling among pregnant and lactating mothers in all our hospitals or healthcare units as part of the services provided to them. Now, during uh, counseling sessions, macronutrients and micronutrients, which were insufficiently consumed based on the study, can be highlighted and better food choices may be advised. Overall, this study is an eye-opener to the food and nutrient intakes of breastfeeding mothers, but it would be better, it would be better to know the factors that led to its results. A, quali a qualitative study may also be conducted to explain to us the figures we got from the study so that we can make better recommendations and policies specifically tailored to lactating mothers. Well, a small nutrition is multifaceted and, need, and needs a multi-sectional approach. The National Nutrition Council urges all stakeholders to continue to advocate for proper nutrition for all, including lactating mothers. And here are some of the recommendations on how you can help promote proper nutrition and physical activity among lactating mothers. First, of course, the pandemic has caused us to shift to the digital platform and the National Nutrition Council is using its social media accounts such as NSC website, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and even Instagram to promote proper nutrition. So please follow or like or share posts so that we can reach more partners to promote good nutrition. Second is, we encourage stakeholders to formulate policies and develop interventions tailored to lactating mothers. Or better yet, review existing policies and interventions for pregnant and lactating women to determine areas for improvement. And third, encourage food establishments to offer healthier meals 
and food manufacturers to reformulate their products or introduce products with better nutritional value. And fourth, start your own food garden and engage others to start their own too. And lastly, be a nutrition influencer. Make sure to reach lactating mothers. Okay, so I will now be moving to my reaction to Dr. Kalini's presentation. Now, let me start off with the Maternal and Child Undernutrition Progress, or MCUP paper, one, which highlights stunting and wasting as persistent public health problems in low-income countries, and that reinforcements need to be done in the first 1,000 days. We concur that we need to strengthen strategies along the first 1,000 days of life, even here in our country. In fact, cognizant to this need, the first 1,000 days of life strategy is included as one of the strategic thrusts of the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition, or PIPA, 2017-2022. Now, to strengthen and sustain our campaigns on the first 1,000 days of life, our Nutrition Month themes have been focusing on this one. And for this year, our Nutrition Month theme is Malnutrition, Patuloy na Labanan, First 1,000 Days, Tutukan. Well, the objectives of this year's theme are to, one, educate to increase the understanding of the first 1,000 days of life strategy and the PPAN or the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition as the overall framework. Second is we encourage, encourage to facilitate collaboration among various stakeholders for skilled up nutrition interventions to fight malnutrition. And third, engage to generate actions from all stakeholders about nutrition from the national level down to the sub-regional and to the LGUs. For better recall, the ABACADA messages have been identified to support the campaign. The ABACA messages focus on key actions in the first 1,000 days of life, while DA calls on all stakeholders to support the campaign. Now, let me take this opportunity to encourage all of you to participate in our activities, which will regularly share and update on our web page and Facebook pages. As for MCUP Paper 2 and the 2021 Revised Framework for Classification of Nutrition Actions, these highlight an integrated and multi-sectoral approach for nutrition interventions, food interventions. Now, food alone may not be significantly, may not significantly improve nutritional status, but collective actions from different sectors and organizations will. Now, as mentioned by Dr. Calibo in the presentation, the drivers of undernutrition are diverse and that novel evidence synthesis methods underscore the need for multi-sectoral action and coordination. That is why the Tutok Kainan Supplementation Program of the NNC is a good example for an integrated and multi-sectoral approach. The NNC partnered with the Agrarian Reform Beneficiary Organizations, or the ARBOS, with the help of the Department of Agrarian Reform to supply fresh commodities used for wet feeding, and also the DOST FNRI technology adapters to supply enhanced Nutriban and other FNRI products. We also now, we are also now in the process of securing a partnership with the Population Commission to integrate family planning and reproductive health in the program through our Nutritex, as well as in nutrition education sessions. Home food production through the help of the local agriculture, of the agriculture offices, of course, with the Department of Agri Agriculture is also integrated, which can help augment the food supply of the beneficiaries. Well, in addition, the NNC has been organizing the different alliances of the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, or the SUN Movement, which is an international movement that brings together various stakeholders to support scaled up interventions in nutrition. It brings together government, civil society, the United Nations, donors, businesses, and academic into a collective effort to improve nutrition. 
and I am proud to say that we have already successfully conducted the Sun Movement 3.0 Philippine launch on 2 June this year. Furthermore, for a policy-level integration of nutrition in healthcare, the NNC sent a document to the DOAs to show the contribution of nutrition to that universal healthcare's overall goal and strategic directions to determine ways how the uni uh, universal healthcare can help realize nutrition outcomes in the PIPAN 2017 to 2022 and the Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022 to emphasize the inclusion of essential nutrition services in the proposed individual-based minimum service package. Another thing that I would like to talk about is that Finding that data on domestic spending for nutrition show a decline for many countries during the same period. Now, this calls for stronger advocacy campaign for more investments in nutrition. Kung baga, more money for nutrition and more nutrition for money, especially the implementation of the Mandana Square ruling next year, where programs will be devolved and more budget will be allocated to the LGUs. Now, our local chief executives will gain more control in funding. So thus, we need to make sure that our local chief executives, our governors, mayors, barangay officials understand that first 1,000 days is a worthy investment. Program is a worthy investment. And as for our local nutrition workers, they should ensure continuity of nutrition programs in their respective areas despite the change in administration. Lastly, Dr. Kalibu has mentioned a lot of research opportunities and I agree with him that we should make science work for the people. Therefore, we call our research organizations and the academe to take on this. Research results can help with us with our com advocacy campaigns as we can be backed up by scientific evidence. To conclude, we support the call for a multi-sectoral integrated approach for the interventions in the first 1,000 days, utilizing evidence-based data. Now more than ever, we need stronger and more comprehensive evidence-based advocacy campaigns for the first 1,000 days. That would be all. Thank you very much once again, and happy Nutrition Month. Thank you, FNRI. Maayong hapon, Dok Dayang Hirang. Kita nyo naman, high energy. Alam nyo, tuwing na-interview, nakausap, napapakinggan ko tong si Dok. Talagang ibang level lagi yung energy, yung passion no, for nutrition. At sa kanya pong uh, uh, trabaho, ay eh, ramdam na ramdam natin lahat. So, thank you, thank you, Dok, ha, for taking, uh, for being so passionate about this. Alam naman natin, kailangan, kailangan natin ang nutrition champions no talaga ngayon and uh, before i call on our second reactor mabilis na mabilis lang uh, malapit na pong election and we all agree that nutrition is such an important uh, agenda so alamin po natin sa mga kakandidato whether on the national level or on the local level ano po yung kanilang plataforma programa pagdating sa nutrition dahil marami pong uh, maraming marami pong pwedeng mangako, di ba? Pero ano ba yung nagawa na nila dati kung sila yung mga re-electionists at ano yung plano nila moving forward. So importante pong uh, tayong lahat na narito, no? Close to 900 of us here who are giving uh, importance to nutrition. We should demand that of our um, of our executives, of our leaders in government. Okay, next, our second reactor. Ito na. Si Dr. Maria Asuncion Silvestre. Hi, Doc. Hello, uh, Ma'am Jean. Thank you very much. Uh, maraming salamat po sa paanyaya. I'm very honored uh, to be a reactor in this first plenary session uh, of the FNR, DOST FNRI seminar series. Maraming salamat po. Happy anniversary to FNRI and uh, congratulations to Dr. Anthony and uh, and Dr. Akdepa, and also congratulations to Dr. Apet Dayang Hirang. Uh, just a few slides, mostly to keep me on track. Baka ho kasi uh, may malimutan po akong mensahe or reaction. 
uh, as with Dr. Anthony, uh, I usually start off with a disclosure statement. Wala po akong stocks, financial relationships, uh, yung tinatawag na proprietary entities, uh, and in particular, milk companies, on, uh, infant formula companies, and baby food companies. Ako po ay nasa civil society ngayon. Ang aking maliit na NGO ay member organization ng nabanggit ni Dr. Apet, the um, uh, Scale Up Nutrition Civil Society Alliance of the Philippines. So my the perspectives that I am bringing to this table now uh, reflect yun pong pagka-civil society ko. So um, I'd like first to, to commend Dr. Agdepa. Marami pong salamat. No? This, um, in evidence-based medicine, ang tawag po namin dito ay research gap talaga. Malaking malaking research gap yung na-feel po nila sa data na na-derive nyo from the 70 breastfeeding uh, mothers that you were able to um, interview. Um, and uh, uh, to make this for the purposes of brevity, to make this short, I just flashed po yung uh, first, uh, first and second of your recommendation slides. And I'd like to thank you po kasi um, uh, dito, uh, kumbaga ho yung, yung American idiom na the devil will be in the details, no? How do we translate this research data to actual messaging for the families, for the mothers, no? Um, uh, pag pumupunta po ang bawat uh, buntis po natin dun sa RHU, sa Rural Health Unit, o di kaya sa ospital kung mas high risk siya, ano po yung dapat sabihin? Ano po? Um, dapat, po, dapat po ba sabihin sa kanya o uminom ka ng uh, maternal milk, no? milk for preggies? Uh, when the data did show that 30% or about one in three of the pregnant mothers inter uh, of the pregnant mothers, um, uh, th there has been demonstration of a rising incidence of overweight and obesity. What 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 is happening? No, um, lampas naman on the whole, yung estimated energy uh, requirement nila. Um, but the balance, the variety, and the moderation seem to be off no dun sa ating mga nanay na nagpapaprenatal no dun sa antenatal care visits kung tawagin no so i i truly appreciate the recommendations that uh, center mostly on on the 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 food groups that were really deficient um especially yung green leafy vegetables natin ano and the importance of this uh, enabling environment even in the womb no dr anthony also alluded to epi epigenetics no is that hindi lamang genes ho inang determine ng inyong outcome as a growing child or even as an adult but also those early intrauterine environments no dun sa first 1000 days no so maraming uh, salamat po doctora um, the recommendation uh, that we really have to improve the dietary um, uh, composition of our mothers. And, um, and this is not to sacrifice her health uh, at yung baby lang talaga ang ating gustong uh, mag-improve ang nutrition, but also to protect her no? from the energy, the, um, the mineral, and the, and the macronutrient consumption. Um, even the um, the resorption of bone, no, uh, na na alam natin ng during pregnancy and even in lactation. So the benefits to both the mother and and the baby are very very important, no. Um, I'd like to share a slide, no. This is from the recently concluded launch of the World Bank report on undernutrition in the Philippines, no. And as you will see here. Um, uh, I'm bringing this up because look at look at how expensive no um, the recommended diet is no um, you see here the cost of the recommended diet and the actual exp uh, in the in the column on your left no yung bar graph on your left nandun yung recommended diet sana and how expensive it is no and on the, in the bar on your right no the actual um, household expenditures na kung ano yung pinaggagastos sa ng ating mga pamilya no um, this is in general not not for lactating mothers no but we see here that um, it it seems to be that um, the the one of the most expensive components of the diet is milk or, and or dairy products but our families are not spending for it no 
um, what is what is the recommendation? Should we recommend that they drink milk um, during their pregnancy? During their pregnancy, no. Do pregnant and lactating mothers really need to drink milk, no? Uh, especially since it's a very expensive um, imported product that um, largely consumes, no, our our um, household um, budgets, no. So this is a very recent, quite, no, I, sh I shouldn't say very recent, 2014 pa ito, but even in 2014, in the systematic review, um, alam natin, they reviewed that uh, during pregnancy and lactation, habang nagbe-breastfeed ang isang ina, uh, na-alter, no, nababago ang calcium balance, no, yung homeostasis kung tawagin, and um, uh, because of changes in her pregnancy hormones, even estrogen levels during lactation, um, vitamin D, no, vitamin cal calcium and phosphorus absorption, nababago during pregnancy and lactation. But what people don't emphasize is that recovery, no, after this bone resorption, recovery of bone mineral density occurs rapidly after the breastfeeding mother um, uh, weight, uh, decreases her breastfeeding, no? We, we like to avoid the term weaning, no? And, um, excuse me just a second. It seems, sabi ng mga authors nitong systematic review, ibig sabihin maraming articles ang kanilang inanalyze, no? It seems that pregnancy itself may lead to bone loss. We know that, no? But if followed by lactation because of the hormonal hormonal um, balance, the hormonal milieu, yung environment ng isang breastfeeding mother, it looks like breastfeeding will have protective effect on bone density while the duration um, of lactation and parity, yung kung ilang buntis niya, may modulate its effects. No, So yung akala natin, ah, pag hindi, pag hindi um, ah, sunod-sunod, at uh, tuloy-tuloy ang kanilang breast, sunod-sunod na pregnancy, tuloy-tuloy ang breastfeeding, ay makukuban ang nanay kasi mag-osteoporosis siya sigurado. No? So it, um, it doesn't seem like that the solo, that the only message should be to drink or to eat calcium sources. It sounds like that reproductive health messages have to also be, have to also be uh, uh, very much emphasized in, um, in counseling, no? Um, just a second po. Next slide lang po. Ayaw mag-advance. Ayan po. Okay. So this is my favorite slide from Dr. Anthony. I'm moving to uh, to Anthony Calibo's presentation. No. Um, what do we need to do for every uh, Filipino? No. Yung inclusivity na tinatawag natin. No. Uh, we have to sure that no mother and child diet will be left behind. No. Pero, pero, it does not look like blanket nutritional or blanket feeding programs work. What we need to do is individualize nutrition counseling. Um, nabanggit ni Dr. Apet that nutrition counseling is so very important and I totally agree. Uh, but it looks like maybe our staffing in the RHUs, no, dun sa baba. Sa mga birthing centers when they first um, do their antenatal care visits, no, it looks like hindi lamang sa hospital kinakailangan ng mga nutritionists, dietitians, mukhang kailangan din po sila sa RHU levels, no? Uh, to do individualized dietary counseling, uh, kasi nabanggit ni Dr. Agdepa, yung 1% over, yung 2% naman below the, ano, so yung outliers doon sa ating bell-shaped bell curve, kung tawagin, hindi natutuunan ng tailored or individualized nutrition counseling dun sa baba po. No? Sabi natin, the devil is in the details and those details are in the hands of our frontliners. No? Nung tinanong ko yung mga midwives na nandun sa mga birthing centers, ano bang nutritional messaging ang kinakaya na niyong i-deliver? No? So our midwives are doing blood pressure, weight, etc. No? Um, uh, uh, Leopold's maneuver, chinecheck yung laki ng bata. No? So Ang, the predominant answer to my question was, uminom kayo ng iron folic, folic acid, no? And um, it was evident, no, malinaw, na kulang yung nutritional counseling ng ating mga midwives. And that's why I feel that yung pagka-deploy ni Dr. Apet dun sa Davao, 
uh, sa Davao del Sur no ng mga nutritionist dietitians uh, binuboost talaga natin yung deployment ng nutritionist dietitians because you are the expert and we hope that um, the individualized nutrition counseling can be done in your hands much much uh, better no so that hindi naman may obese pero may underweight no yung hindi maka-afford ng milk after you give her one tin uh, baka gamitin pa dun sa mga batang iba no kung ang coffee creamer ginagawang infant formula uh, mas lalo pa siguro yung mother's milk no yung mothers for preggies no so nutrition counseling has to be individualized and hopefully to to catch more of our uh, prenatal um, care moms no um in the RHUs also, and not just in the hospitals, no? Um, uh, calibrated policies, programs, plans, and investments using a whole of society approach. Uh, this is uh, so, so uh, emphasized in our PPAN, yung Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition. But what we did see in one of our assessments of the PPAN was that sa barangay level po, uh, kinukulang ho yung uh, barangays na may action plan yung tinatawag na BNAPs, no the barangay nutrition action plans no and then one of my favorite messages also is even lalo dito sa covid pandemic uh, which uh, dr anthony called um, together with malnutrition the 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 syndemic no dalawa double double yung ating emergency ngayon is that we should make science work for the people no uh, this is very, very important. Translate the data into policies and into practice. So I just put together Dr. Anthony's summary, summary recommendations. Magandang maganda na ang framework po natin ngayon ay yung first 1,000 days. Hindi na po nag sa days sa date of birth. Hindi, hindi po nag sa unang yakap. Kunti dun sa uh, pagka-diagnose ng pregnancy, which sana, and especially for teenage mothers, ay um, ma-detect at hindi magtago na pregnant, no? Um, uh, he, Dr. Anthony, uh, emphasized that global commitments uh, provide the recommendations. We do have the technical packages already in place here in the Philippines, and we would like to uh, claim rights, bra bragging rights siguro na nandyan ang ating mga programa for severe acute malnutrition, for example. Um, for for premature and small babies, may fail health packages tayo, etc. No, so the technical packages are there, pero talaga the devil is in the details. Implementation who nagkakatalo, no? And just when just when we have a good appreciation for the terms nutrition sensitive and nutrition specific, hala hindi na pala indirect at direct interventions na tayo ngayon, no? So we have to really uh, catch up, no? Evidence-based recommendations are already available for scaled-up implementation of our nutrition interventions. And as Dr. Anthony uh, summarized, there are um, opportunities for research and development. Um, between the 2008 Lancet uh, series and the Lancet series in 2014, not a lot has been changed, no? Pero so yung, you might think it's same old, same old, no? Pero hindi naman, no? What we really need to do is uh, a lot also, bukod po sa bench research, uh, we really should go also into implementation research and pragmatic research, uh, so to speak, no? With the cross-cutting strategies and to try to be careful of what in evidence-based medicine we call unintended harm, no? unintended harm. Tatanggapin po ba natin itong mga milk formula for older kids or for preggies, no? Yun pala, yung metabolic syndrome naman ang, ang katalo later on, no? So unintended harm uh, is what we have to be very, very careful of. We have to use um, evidence-based, uh, data-driven recommendations, no? And um, in the UHC law, we also have uh, mandates for uh, clinical practice guidelines, which can be updated. Um, there's funding for that and also health technology assessment or yung HTA. Yan po yung naipasok po natin sa UHC law for our research and development. No? Um, and yung last bullet, no? you cannot improve what you aren't measuring. No? So actions are needed on data and accountability and the financing agenda because, uh, um, gosh, believe it or not, 
2022 end up unang kita natin no so um, we're only a few months away i'm i'm showing this slide only to emphasize that um ayo ho natin itong computation na to 9 months of pregnancy plus 2 years times 365 days no we prefer this framing 270 days of pregnancy 180 days of exclusive breastfeeding plus the 550 remaining days until two years or beyond, no? Because this type of a formula frames our thinking, frames our mindset founded on what has been proven to be the most important preventive health intervention, and that is the global IYCF strategy, no? And uh, I won't repeat this again because uh, I scanned um, our participants and most of you by now, I'm sure are very familiar with the infant and young child feeding strategy. So my key reactions is thumbs up, framing our actions on the first 1000 days, no? move our mindset into pregnancy, no? into pregnancy and even for teenage uh, girls no? uh, and other women of reproductive age who are in high risk environments, move our interventions towards them. No? We have to in invest in breastfeeding mother-infant diets, no? Um, and the concept of the, mo the mother and the breastfeeding mother and infant diet being the first food system. I would like to uh, put that forth, no? Uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of talk now about food systems, but I seem to miss um, the emphasis on the breastfeeding mother and infant diet being the first micro and macro food system. Um, all throughout both uh, Dr. Agdepas and Dr. Calibo's um, presentations, no, yung importansya po ng translating evidence from the bench or from implementation research to policy and to practice through consistent messaging. Kailangan po sana talaga consistent messaging. Hindi po yung isang society nagsasabi, okay, start start milk form ah start solids at four months uh when the global iycf strategy says six months no um this third first food system uh saves lives we know that it protects uh child nutrition and it fosters um health and development so that our babies can reach the maximum the optimal status of their health um, and um, in future years up to adulthood even. And it also benefits mothers in the short and even in the long term in terms of overweight, obesity, diabetes, the metabolic syndrome, and even breast and ovarian malignancies. No? Yung cancers po natin na pe-prevent din ng breastfeeding. Lastly, ang isang reaction uh, natin which we should by, uh, know by all, now, uh, all by now is that not breastfeeding incurs immeasurable losses to our families and our communities. And that is the most important arena in this, in this battle against this syndemic, no? So I'd like to just uh, uh, mention our, my motto is, uh, for our children, we have to do it right the first time because as the first 1000 day uh, framework has emphasized to us, um, they don't really have a second time and you cannot reverse the injuries and the insults that they sustain uh, during pregnancy and the first two years. Marami salamat po and congratulations, Doc Anthony, Doc, Doc uh, Agdepa. Salamat po. Thank you, Doctora. Thank, Thank you, Doc. Doc, Thank what's you. your nickname? Mian? Mian. <laughs> Mian, okay. May mga nag, uh, daming nag-agree sa inyo. Ay, salamat I po. agree with Dr. Mian. I thank you po. Ako po yun. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan, mamaya balikan natin ano yung mga points na nag agree sila. Pero nakakatawa kayo mag-explain, Dok. Kalmadong Ay. kalmado. Parang kahit na napakalaki ng problema. Eh. Ay, nako. Yun nga ang isa ko pong sasabihin nga. Eh. Nakaka-overwhelm, di ba? Pero... Parang hindi mo alam saan magsisimula, di ba, Dok? No, we can do it. We can do it. Di ba, Ma'am Jing? Your, yes, your husband in the LGU has direct experience. O nga, Dok, eh, nakarelate ako sa lahat ng mga kinikwento nyo dito kasi talagang kailangan ibaba down to the LGU level. Pati si Dok Apet kanina, di ba? Uh, yes. She was talking about uh, giving budget to the local executives, etc. So balikan po natin. Mamaya, thank you, Dok Mian. 
Ayan. Punta naman po natin ngayon yung ating third reactor. Walang iba kung hindi. Si Dr. Mercedita Magdaleno Makalintal. Hi, Doc! Hi, good afternoon, Ching. Um, Doc Mercy would... ba kayo? Doc yes, Mercy. yes. Yeah. I'm Doc Mercy. Yes, I'm Doc Mercy. Um, I would like to congratulate Dr. Mel Agdepa and Dr. Anthony Calibo for the very comprehensive report. As a professional caregiver, it, um, it is a wake-up call for me to do uh, the things that I do in the best capacity that I can. Um, and I would like to thank the organizing committee for having me. It is my honor to be a part of your 47th uh, DOST FNRI seminar series on um, good nutrition in the first 1,000 days, starting right is the right start. Uh, actually, my reaction is a combination already of the report given to us by Dr. Agdepa and Dr. Anthony Calibo. So let me start by saying that nutrition is the fundamental aspect of life. It is linked to multiple com components, system, and processes. These include growth and development, cell metabolism, and as mentioned, it is also concerned in the epigenetics and nutrigenomics including our immunity, health, and disease eventually in these um, children. Maternal nutrition or the um, adequacy of maternal nutritional status during pregnancy and lactation is actually a key factor influencing the first 1,000 days of the life of these uh, children in terms of fetal and newborn health, acute and chronic diseases eventually. So why is it important to focus on the first 1,000 days? It is important because healthy future begins in the first 1,000 days, and it provides the building blocks for the brain development of these children. We have to give them as a fair start, okay? Nourishing a strong start for all these children, and we have to invest them for their future. Okay, as mentioned earlier, that most of the lactating and pregnant women have low protein intake and maternal, uh, maternal protein intake actually serves as a structural link between neurons, in which case 90% of the brain development occurs in the first 1,000 days of these children. Perinatal protein malnutrition could actually lead to the delayed physical development neurological deficit, and impaired learning and memory, as well as social and economic dysfunction. It is also um, uh, evident that protein energy supplementation among these pregnant and lactating mothers would result to an increased weight gain in infants, especially malnourished women, and for those uh, children who were supplemented uh, during their lactation stage. Uh, could give to a taller uh, babies. Um, birth weight and brain size are actually influenced by maternal nutrition. There is a rapid pace of myelinization in the first 1,000 days of these babies. DHA is one of the predominant omega-3 polyfatty acid found in the brain, which is almost 10 to 20% of their total lipids. Actually, 50% of this DHA in the brain is actually accumulated during pregnancy. Another very important role is that DHA in the diet of a pregnant and lactating women are associated with learning problems and memory deficit. They found out that those children with developmental and behavioral disorders like ADHD, dyslexia, and dyspraxia have a low level of DHA in their blood. Also, another important nutrient that the body cannot synthesize, but it, can, it has to be um, given okay, uh, from the different sources uh, can, uh, is lutein. Okay? Lutein is a major carotenoid for learning and memory as well. It contributes to 59% of the total carotenoids in the infant brain as well. It is also essential for the development of vision, 
crucial for the development of the nervous system, and it is concentrates in the region of infant's brain related to learning and memory. As I have said, the body cannot synthesize, so it must be acquired from dietary sources, in which case, from Dr. Agdepa's report, most of the mothers have low level of intake of green leafy vegetable, in which lutein is most abundant. So again, if we are uh, deficient or there is a low um, micronutrient intake, it could really affect in the brain development. As been mentioned and been reported by Dr. Agdepa and also Dr. Kalibo, that iron is one of the most common. Um, Low, uh, low intake among pregnant women and lactating mothers. And their impact is actually on the memory learning, which can lead to poor cognitions and uh, cognitive development. Also folate, thiamine, and B12 can impair language and episodic memory. Vitamin B12 could also affect the myelinization stage of the brain in this age group, and cognitive could be a problem as well later on. It is also responsible for the RBC formation and nerve cell function. And as mentioned by Dr. Kalibo, iodine is also one of the main um, common micronutrient deficient in lactating mothers as well as pregnant women that could lead to deficiency and can have a long-term effects on neurocognition in children. So having said that, we really have to give them a fair start. By what? by continuing breastfeeding because breastfeeding is a gold standard for infant nutrition. It provides the infant with exposure to a variety of flavors because it is said that there's a hint of flavor of whatever is the maternal or it could be a reflection of the maternal diet. Pre and postnatal exposure to different flavors affect infant's acceptance to a variety of flavors that could be beneficial to them in the long run. So therefore, in order for us to help these children, complementary feeding is one of the most important part of these 1,000 days of these children because it is a window of opportunity to prevent undernutrition and long-term effect. So how do we give complementary feeding? It has to be timely. You have to introduce when the, need, when the need for energy and nutrients are not enough from exclusive breastfeeding, such as 6 to 4, 24 months of age. You have to give it adequately to provide sufficient energy, protein, and micronutrients to meet the growing child's nutritional needs. Properly, given consistent with the child's signals of appetite and satiety, meals frequently and feeding are suitable for age and it has to be prepared hygienically, stored, prepared, and fed with the clean hands and utensils. So in order for them to avoid uh, deficiencies from macro and micronutrients, it is recommended that these children should receive at least four of this uh, minimum di dietary diversity, which include your grains, roots, and tubers, legumes and nuts, dairies, flesh foods, eggs, vitamin A rich fruits and veggies, and they separate other fruits and veggies. So there are actually short-term and long-term effects of micronutrients in the body, especially in this uh, first 1,000 days of these children. For vitamin C, it is said for the short-term effect, it actually prevents or shortens the course of colds. And in the long term, it has, um, it has a preventive uh, effect for Alzheimer's disease and for the sink, it increases your resistance to infection, improved linear growth for uh, children less than five years of age and has a protective for cancer. For your iron, of course, um, there is um, uh, a prevention for your uh, anemia could lead to poor brain development and dementia and Alzheimer's later in life. And for vitamin D, we all know that, that it can prevent you from developing uh, uh, bone deformity secondary to rickets and diabetes type 2 mellitus uh, later in life. Also for vitamin K, for your hypoprotombinemia of the newborn and uh, 
poor growth and arterial calcification also when they get older. So it is really very important for us to invest in the first 1,000 days of these children because mal uh, malnutrition could have um, uh, short-term or long-term effect uh, in these children, and it could even be temporary or a permanent disabilities to these children. For example, stunting. Stunting, if happens in the in children more than two years of age, are harder to revert, and also wasting. Um, Impaired cognitive development, if it is beyond three years of age, it becomes permanent already. That could result in their poor school performances. And this will have them a poor chance in life to have a better future. And um, decreased immunity also can happen. That's why there's a possibility for them to be sickly, okay? Constantly absent in school, Okay, plus they have a school performance. So later they will not have any opportunity to look for a better job. So, and because of that, some of them could even, even have an increased mortality and morbidity. Having said that, the recommendation is to provide counseling about healthy eating, stay active and prevent excessive weight gain during pregnancy and to provide multiple supplementation, especially for low and middle income group. Support breastfeeding on how? Well, it was being discussed thoroughly by uh, Dr. Silvestre and um, the other actant, and also provide guidance of food sources that provide key nutrients required for brain development. So these are the programs again that was mentioned before and start complementary feeding at the right time, adequate amount, properly given, and safe. And as a healthcare providers, and some of us are policy maker, it is our responsibility to give them a better future. Because anyway, ang kabataan ang pag-asa ng bayan. And with that, I say thank you. Thank you, Doc. Kalmadong kalmado rin si Doc. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Ha, talaga believe and very very clear, no. Ang gaganda ng mga sharing um, ng tatlo nating mga reactors and of course yung ating mga panelists. Ang daming mga questions, ang daming mga um, messages agreeing with our panelists, with our reactors. Kaya lang wala na raw tayong time. So, according to our FNRI uh, organizers, uh, to our participants, more than 900 galing participants uh, are watching right now. No? Um, they're instructing everyone to please make sure you have your email addresses indicated para masagot daw po nila yung mga tanong po ninyo. So, uh, papadala na lang daw po kayo ng mga sagot. And again, uh, they will be posting the presentation sa atin pong FNRI website. So para po sa atin namang uh, mga mabilis lang, no? a few, a few uh, comments here. So most of them are thanking our reactors and our panelists sa uh, hindi pong mga sharing. Thank you for the knowledge, etc. And um, there are a lot of questions on the LGU level. Ano daw po yung mga recommendations or specific projects na pwedeng simulan? Um, yung mga NDs, no? nutritionist dietitians, uh, nakakalimutan daw po no? that they are key. They are key to the um, success of the services given by health facilities and LGUs. Ayan. May mga nagtatanong din po. Uh, kumusta na? No? What, what happened to the Barangay Nutrition Scholars? Kumusta na po sila? Are they still in the RHU or health centers? Um, thank you for recognizing the importance of the roles of the RNDs and uh, agree that there should be NDs for individual nutrition counseling. Dapat talaga member ang ND ng primary care service providers. Ayan. 
So marami pong mga message. Again, please put your email addresses para po masagot po ang inyo pong mga katanungan. Okay. So dahil wala na po tayong time, sayang, no? Pero ang gaganda ng sharing, ang gaganda ng mga uh, recommendation ng ating mga panelists at yung atin pong mga um, reactors. So at this point, we will be giving our certificates. Ayan. To our panelists. So unahin po natin yung ating mga panelists. So basahin natin ang kanila pong certificates. Now, tanong ko kanina, meron bang pinadalang pagkain ang ating <laughs> FNRI organizers? Wala daw. Oo nga. Ano tayo ngayon kasi virtual. Kaya virtual food din tayo. Ayan. So unahin natin si Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa. So Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa for sharing her invaluable time and knowledge as presenter of food and nutrient intakes of breastfeeding Filipino mothers in the plenary, plenary session. Starting right is the right start. During the 47th FNRI Seminar Series Virtual Edition. Given this fifth day of July 2021 at the DOST FNRI. Ayan. Signed, Joan Castro, co-chair, 47th FNRI Seminar, Seminar Series, and Leia Dahay, President FNRI Employees Association Incorporated, and Charmaine Duante, overall chair, 47th FNRI Seminar Series. Yay! Hey, thank you! Thank you, Tita Mel! Ayan. Uy, pag ano natin, ha? Thank you so much, Jing, for hosting... Of course, miss ko na kayo. Let's let's discuss oh. all of these topics sa atin pong uh, program. Ayun pala yung input ko, no? Oh, pero mamaya na lang. Sige. Go, go, go. Tita Mel. Okay na ko. Okay na kayo. Okay. Next, of course, we'd like to present a certificate of appreciation to Dr. Anthony Calibo for sharing his invaluable time and knowledge as presenter of the Lancet Maternal and Child Under Nutrition Progress. What can we learn? Opportunities for research and development for the Sustainable Development Goals. In the plenary session, starting right is the right start during the 47th FNRI Seminar Series Virtual Edition. Given this fifth day of July 2021, signed Charmaine Duante, Leia Dahay, and of course, Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa. Thank you, Doc Anthony. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Mel, Doc Pamchari, Ms. Leia, and Ms. Jean. Maraming salamat po. Congratulations po sa ating lahat. Thank you, thank you. And again, to our uh, reactors naman po, a certificate of appreciation is presented to Dr. Asusena Dayanghirang for sharing her invaluable time and expertise as a reactor. In the plenary session, starting right, is the right start. Signed by Charmaine Duante, Leia Dahay, and Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa. Thank you, Doc Apet. And next, we Dr. are... Dr. Apet, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Doc Mel, Doc Anthony, and Jing. Apet. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> Yung, bu yung buhok ni Doc Apet, bongga parati. Eh. Ano yan, body eh, pagdating sa hairstyle. Eh. Ayan. Next, doc, um, Dr. Anthony. Okay na si Doc Anthony. Okay. Certificate of Appreciation for Dr. Maria Asuncion Silvestre for sharing her invaluable time and expertise as a reactor in the plenary session. Starting right is the right start. Again, signed by Charmaine Duante, Lea Dahay, and Dr. Imelda Angeles Agdepa. Thank you, Doc Mian. Maraming salamat po sa opportunity. Salamat, Dr. Mian. More opportunities po. <laughs> Thank you, Doc Mian. Yes. yes, decade of nutrition tayo. Opo. Thank and you. And finally, yes. Thank you po, Doc Mian. Finally, another certificate of appreciation to Dr. Mercedita Makalintal. Again, for sharing her invaluable time and expertise as a reactor in the plenary session, starting right is the right start. Signed by Charmaine Duante, Leia Dahay, and Dr. Imelda 
Angeles Agdepa. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma'am Mel. Nami-miss na kita talaga. Super miss Doc kita. Doc Mer, salamat. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Jean. Thank you, uh, um, Joanne and all the organizing committee. It is really my pleasure to be part of this. Thank you so much. Galing. Kahit na virtual, di ba? Kahit di tayo nagkikita at nami-miss natin ng isa't isa. Hindi mapipigil ang dami ng impormasyon at galing ng atin pong mga oh, actors. Ma. No, tita, no? Reactors natin. Oo, oh, ang oh, dami-dami. Oo. Oh, oh. Nag-uumapaw, no? Nag-uumapaw talaga yung uh, impormasyon na nakuha natin. And um, in, in any, every time I'm asked to ano, no, uh, host or MC events, lagi ko lang pong ini-emphasize talaga yung role pa rin ng media sa lahat po, no? Lahat ng bagay, anumang usapin. And ngayon, yeah. lalo na, hindi lamang yung traditional media, di ba, um, yeah. di Amel, no? Yung social media. Social media, yes. Napaka-importante. And in that sense, no, it has been democratized. Meaning, yeah. lahat po tayo, we have the power in our hands on the types of information that we want to share, on the types of advocacies you want to support. So, syempre, wow. nutrition number number one. Di ba, Doc Mel? Talagang number one, foundation ng buhay, no? It's the foundation of life. <laughs> mm-hmm. O kaya, Doc Mel, sabi ko kanina, no? we should demand our leaders. Yeah, the yeah. LGU. Dahil yes. sa Madanas ruling na, no? nakakatakot din kung minsan. It's just because, uh, yun nga, yung nasa chat box, I agree with them. Uh, wala talagang caretaker ng nutrition at the, at the local level. So we know very well na midwives ay nandoon BNS and but to what extent can they actually offer uh, the right messages to our uh, community so yun yung problema but I think I'm very thankful for Dr. Arpit they are doing well in terms of advocating uh, positioning R&Ds and the different local government agencies thank you so much Dr. Arpit Yeah hey okay so Doc Mel, first day yeah. pa lang ito. Oo, oh, oh, yes. Hanggang Friday, Ma'am G. Oo oh, <laughs> nga. Pero pang to. apat na araw. Oo. Oh, oh. oh, pero exciting naman ang atin pong talakay. Sana yan. Sana ganito pa rin yung attendance yes. natin. no? More than 900. And um, I think we encourage you to actually participate more because in the succeeding sessions, we have all those kind of evidence-based talaga wherein you can do actions. Ang palagi kong sinasabi, yung knowledge dapat matransform sa action. Kasi kung knowledge na hindi ina-actionan, wala rin nangyayari. Sayang, no? The value for money is really very uh, ineffective. That's true, Tita Mel. Sabi nga ni Ernie Baron, sa knowledge, <laughs> may power. <laughs> Oy, yan, correct ka. Tama. <laughs> Galing yan, na, eh. No? Napag-aalat ang edad natin. Kasi yung millennial, baka hindi na nila kilala si Ernie Baron. Kuya Kim na ang kilala nila. <laughs> ah, sige, sige. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Tita Mel. So we, we Thank you end. so much, Jing. Thank you. And to all Anytime. the organizers led by Charity. Thank Anytime. you so much. Looking for forward to more yes. ano, collaboration, Tita Mel. Yes, Thank you po again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So invite din po natin, na, Tita Mel, all the participants, Uh, yung atin pong uh, Pamilya Talk, that's every uh-huh. Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, 5.30 ng hapon hanggang 7 po ng gabi, uh, on my Facebook page, YouTube channel, and sa ABS-CBN uh, Scene Zone channel sa Kumu, that's every Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Pag Wednesday po, that's the health, no? That's the health uh, episode. So every other Wednesday, guest po natin ang FNRI. And mapapanood nyo rin po sa Facebook page and YouTube channel ng FNRI lahat po ng ating pinag-uusapan doon na patungkol sa nutrition. But of course, we try to make it you know a bit sexier. Nagsasama po tayo ng artista, di ba, Tita Mel? As our case studies, may kantahan, may, may mga uh, papremyo. So we invite all of you po, no? uh, silipin po ninyo yung ating pong show. And we invite all of our panelists and uh, reactors. Si Dr. Libo, nag na natin dati. So yung reactors po natin at lahat po ng nutritionists. Yeah, people. I think, uh, oh, oh, if we share mo ulit yung mga panelists natin kasi mm. they, got a very bright, uh, they got very bright ideas, no? Yes. Yung presentation na nga po lang nila ay 
Sobra ata ng isang oras na show mo. Oo nga. Padali natin oh. yan. Padali natin yan. Oh. I-host natin sila. Oh. Ano? Oo. Oh, oh. Sige po. Oo. Oh, oh. Gawin natin. Gawin natin. And then oh. all of our nutritionists, dietitians, and all of the other participants, yeah. uh, padala nyo po sa Facebook page ng FNRI or kahit po sa aking Facebook page, Jing Casaneda. Ano po yung suggestions ninyo pagdating sa usaping nutrition? Or baka sila, Tita Mel, gusto nila mag-guest. Pwede naman. Yes, diba? kasi ang nutrition kasi mayroon silang uh, practice groups. So mm. may clinical nutrition, may public health nutrition, may uh, academe. So lahat yan pwede ma- nating i-guest para ma-bombard yung LGU yes. na makasalaga ng, uh, ng nutritionist. Yes, correct, I will correct. connect you with the different groups of end up. Yes. Sige, Tita Mel. Tsaka may mga niluluto rin tayo ngayong mga LGU programs eh. So, pwede natin ipasok. Pwede ipasok. Yes. Uh-oh. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you po. Salamat sa organizers din. Bye-bye po. Ayan. Bye everyone. And before any, before we go pala ha, um, pinapabasa lang ng ating organizers. Siyempre, nagpapasalamat tayo uh, sa atin pong mga sponsors. Ayan, yeah. Nutridense Food Manufacturing Corporation, a leading food manufacturer of healthy, nutritious, and research-based food products distributed nationwide. Swiss Pharma Research Laboratories, a leading manufacturer of pharmaceutical products in the Philippines, and a technology adopter of the enhanced Nutribun. Our silver sponsor, Maan's <laughs> Big Shop from Davao City, one of the newest licensees of the DOST FNRI, developed enhanced Nutribun technology. Parang hindi ko natikman itong Nutribun na to. Visa. Totoo? <laughs> hindi mo mo natikman talaga? Hindi ba, Tita Mel? Papadala kami, magpapadala kami. <laughs> Ayan, okay. Uh, our bronze sponsors, the DOST National Capital Region, so DOST NCR Regional Office, Mar- Mary Loy Food Products and Merchandising. Uy, from Tumawini, Isabella. Waffle Time and Great Foods Concepts Incorporated in Iloilo City and RCJ Trading and General Merchandise. And for our other major sponsors, we are grateful for our partners, the Philippine Association of Nutrition Incorporated, the first analytical services and technical cooperative or fast laboratories, Arteche Bread House from Eastern Samar, Rubens Bake Shop from Katbalogan Samar, JA Fruits and Vegetable Processing from San Mateo, Isabela, Science Savings and Loan Association, The Hermanos Pizza from Tangub City, Misamis Occidental, and Pan Ni Juan from Tomas Opus, Southern Leyte. So thank you very much po to all of our sponsors, sa lahat po ng nanood at nakinig sa lahat ng panelists. At syempre sa mga reactors, maraming salamat po. Tomorrow ha is another day. So ito po may reminder sa atin, yung mga registered participants lamang po ang mabibigyan ng certificates for the 47th DOST FNRI Seminar Series. So again, thank you po. Thank you, James. Thank you, Dr. Kalibo. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. See you, see you. Thank you, on Mel. Bye-bye and you. Thank you, Ms. Jing and our reactors. Yes, thank you, bye everyone. Bye bye. Congratulations. Uh, First day, pala ito. Bye bye. I'll see you bye-bye. soon. Bye bye. Bye bye, Dr. Mers. Bye, Doc Mercy. Bye, Doc Mian. Doc Apet. Bye, Doc Anthony. Bye bye. Bye bye, Doc bye-bye. Anthony. Bye-bye. I'll invite you, Doc Anthony, ha, din sa aking webinar. May link na po akong nakuha. Thank you, po. Opo. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Ms. Bye, Doc Mario. Bye. Thank you, Doc Mario, for joining us, Dr. Barba. Salamat po. Thank you. Hi, Jing. Thank you. Miss you, Doc. Bye. Bye-bye.
bigas, hindi mawawala sa hapag ng bawat Pilipino. Ang munggo, hindi lang tuwing biyernes ginigisa at niluluto. Kapag pinagsama ang dalawa, higit pa ang naibibigay na sustansya. Ang bigas, hindi mawawala sa hapag ng bawat Pilipino. Ang munggo, hindi lang tuwing biyernes ginigisa at niluluto. Kapag pinagsama ang dalawa, higit pa ang naibibigay na sustansya. Sa Santa Barbara, Pangasinan, matatagpuan ang Nutridense Food Manufacturing Corporation ni Rocky Doktor. Ang unang na-adapt namin ay yung sa complementary products. Una ay yung rice, mongo blend, and curls. Ang blend po na to ay pagkain ng bata, 6 to 23 months old. Ang gagawin lang po natin sa blend, ilagay sa bowl, tagdagan ng mainit na tubig, haluin siya, at yun, pwede na ipakain sa bata. Ang pangalawa naman ay ang ating Rimu Curls. Ngayon, yung, ito po ay ready snack food. Pwede mo lang siyang buksan, pwede mong buksan, at makikita mo na siya, it's the healthy snack curls inside. Ang ito po ay pandagdag tangkad at saka bigat. Ang susunod sa ating complementary products ay yung ating uh, food fortificant na tinatawag natin Go and Grow. Kahit anong pagkain sa bahay, niluto habang mainit pa, dagdag mo lang siya, imix mo na siya, at sapat na para mabigyan ng vitamina gaya ng iron, zinc, folic acid, calcium sa ating kainan. Pang-apat dati sa complementary food ay tinatawag nating mamsi. Ito po ay napakasarap, napakamalinam ng sa mga bata. And this is designed for the stunted children. Yung payat na bansot na parang ang hirap uh, lumaki, yung palaging nagkakasakit na bata, brown rice bar. Ito po ay napakainam na product na gamit o na sa mga busy and active people. It, this is also good for during emergencies kasi during emergencies wala kang makain, wala hindi makaluto. Ayon sa World Hunger Report noong 2018, may git labing apat na milyong Pilipino ang undernourished o hindi nakakakuha ng sapat na sustansya. Maaring dahil sa kahirapan o maling diet. Ang mga produkto ng Nutridense, ipinapamahagi ng mga LGU at ibang government agencies para malabanan ang malnutrisyon. nag export rin siya sa Amerika. That is one of the best satisfaction that we ever had. Ang business naman kasi namin, it's not simply about earning money from the business. It's about improving lives. So, having our products being used by different agencies, taken by a lot of thousands of children and even adults, Eh, give us a lot of satisfaction kasi learning about good results in their use eh, nakakataba ng puso. Yung kita naman eh, sumusunod na lang but not, I'm not more on that. I'm more on the improvement of their lives. Sa proyekto ng FNRI, tinuturuan nila ang mga negosyante kung paano magsimula ng food processing business. Ang Food and Nutrition Research Institute ay isa sa mga ehensya ng Department of Science and Technology. Kami ay may mandato na tingnan ang nutritional situation ng bansa. Nuturoan namin sila simula ng pag-conceptual ng kanilang business, kung ano ang dapat i-gawin doon sa kanyang planta, ano ang mga equipment na dapat tingnan at uh, ilagay sa, sa processing facilities. Uh, tinuturoan din namin sila ng mga food safety. Kung ikaw ay nasa business na yon, so hindi na tayo mag-start sa zero. So maaari natin silang i-enhance yung planta nila, pagandahin pa, at bigyan ng diin yung mga pag-improve ng product quality. Uh, Lalong-lalo lang ang nutritional quality ng produkto. Para naman sa gusto mo ng mag-backyard business, nagte-training ang FNRI ng fruit, vegetable, at meat processing para sa mga interesado na gawin itong negosyo. Dapat maging uh, tama yung nutrisyon na binibigay ng natin Hindi lang sa mga bata, but sa buong pamilya. Kaya nga po, yung aming mga pag-aaral dito ang ginagawa ay tinitingnan ano ba ang tapat o sapat na pagkain para sa mga nagbubuntis, sa mga nag, uh, nag, beb, nagpapasuso, sa mga nagpapalaki ng bata, at sa mga adolescents, at sa mga adults. So, yung holistic approach is to proper health and nutrition. 
Sa kaso ni Rocky, ang FNRI ang nagturo sa kanya ng teknolohiyang ginagamit ng Nutridens sa paggawa ng healthy food mula fortified rice hanggang chicheria. I think uh, the, the scientifically proven technologies should be considered first and foremost sa isang negosyante para wala ng trial and error. Una, number two, because these products are research-based. So, kung claim natin na Remo Curls or Blend is good for complementary feeding, meron na siyang efficacy study. So, when we claim it na makakapatangkad, makakapagdagdag uh, bigat, then it's there. Written na siya. And proven na siya. Nagde-develop din ang FNRI ng mga makina na pwedeng gamitin ng mga negosyante sa paggawa ng food products. With the help ng mga podtech namin, yun, sila yung nade-develop talaga para malaman kung ano yung mga magandang formulation, maging uh, nutritious product, kami yung mag, mag-scale up ng mga, kasi mga ginagamit nilang mga equipment ay laboratory equipment lang, maliliit na equipment para sa development. Dito sa food pilot plant kami yung nag-design, tapos with the help ng mga fabricator namin para ma- mabuo yung makina, yung into large scale na. Dahil dito, lumaki na ang Nutridens na tinataglang noong 2013. Business is one of the rewarding professions that we can ever have in terms of growth, professional growth, in terms of